What up, gang of Lane? Carolina Jackpot time coming at you. It is Monday evening. First off, I uh, wanted to get into the Robin Kell Show, Callaway's College Football Bowl Pick'em Challenge. Guys, you only got about four more days to send your $20 to Carolina Jackpot and go over to the Robin Kell Show website and make your picks. It's only $20 to get in. How big is the pot going to be? Don't know. That depends on how many people get in the contest. Ray Bob, who won the regular season contest took home over $2,700 right here before Christmas. Now, you're not going to take home $2,700. Uh, I don't think we're going to get that many people in it, but we could with a little bit of a push if everybody that got in the regular one got in this one. And it's a one-time shot. You make your picks on all the bowl games and the four playoff or the two playoff games and uh, you're done. And then you just sit back and wait to see how your picks did against the spread. So real easy to do. I'm going to link the uh, website down in the uh, description box below so you can go right over there. It's as easy as one, two, tres. Now, getting into some college football stuff. Uh, after I made my video today earlier, kind of... Uh, you know, getting on Shane Beamer's case a little bit about why we had all these folks down and we didn't have any commitments from any of them that, uh, you know, how can you show off your campus, show off your football facilities, show off all this great stuff you got going on down there and not get a commitment from somebody. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, he did get two commitments this afternoon. One of them, I believe, was the guy who was already uh, done given a commitment yesterday that was silent, uh, which was the JUCO guy, Jerome Brown, I think was his name. And anyway, uh, from uh, Bamberg, South Carolina, and then Jerron Brown, the young man from Coastal Carolina. They said they wasn't going to have enough NIL money to satisfy. Well, I guess they got enough money from somewhere to satisfy him because uh, he's committed to the Gamecocks. And there was no shortage of people in the comment section to let me know that, uh oh, you got too committed already. Hoo hoo hoo. You're always bitching. You're always moaning. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, let me let me clue you in on something. You're gonna need a whole lot more than that. We're gonna need a whole lot more than that to be competitive. I'm just, um, I, guys, guys, I don't know. And, and and let me know if you feel the same way. I was watching um, a video today put out by one sports talk Jay, one of my favorite YouTubers, Tennessee Vols YouTuber. He was talking about, you know. Just, you know, I was just kind of looking over some different teams and their rosters and, you know, what their needs were and who they might be going after for, you know, you know in the transfer portal and, you know, who was who was asking for what and they was talking about the Tennessee team and who left and, well, you know, they really couldn't afford to pay him this much and he's talking about how, well, coaches got to be really careful nowadays with, you know, we got to be able to pay this guy this much. We also got to pay this guy a little bit too and, you know, we've got to be, uh, you know, kind of shuffling off the people who aren't going to get any playing time and bringing in some who are. And, you know, we got to make sure they're satisfied enough to get the playing time that they want. And I'm just like, you know, listen to this, and he's correct in all those points. And I'm thinking, get the playing time that they want. Get the playing time that you want. You know, wh where I come from, you know, there's something called a coach. Right? And and this kind of goes back to that Xavier McLeod dude who wanted to redshirt. And there was another kid at, at NC State who's a quarterback that uh, they did an interview on 24-7 uh, Sports. They interviewed him, an MJ Morris, who uh, also wanted to redshirt and, and got upset because Dave Duran kept uh, – wanting him to play in these games against Marshall. He wanted him to play against Duke. He wanted to play, and he was, he was going to burn up his red shirt. So he got upset. He took his t decided to get himself in a transfer portal. Or maybe he's not in the portal yet. I don't know. Who knows anymore with all these guys. But my point is, these, these individuals, they have way too much power right now. You know, it's like all, the, all these young men have all the power. Now, I agree with the sentiment that well, if it wasn't for those young men, then you wouldn't have you wouldn't have college football. You you wouldn't, you wouldn't have any athletes. Okay, the, the same would be true that says that if you don't have any coaches, you wouldn't have college football. It's almost like in some cases, why do we even need a coach? Because the, the, they're gonna if they don't get the playing time that they want, they're gonna leave. If you make them play too much, they're gonna leave. You know, where's the freaking happy medium with these people at? 
You know, it's a it's a shitty effed up society anyway. We know that right now. Bunch of freaking virtue signalers, a uh, bunch of soft people, a uh, bunch of people who have to have their way about everything or they're going to cry foul or they're going to, you know, cry, dis you know, discrimination or somebody's going to cry, oh, I was, uh, you know, I was treated unfairly or somebody here is going to uh, be mad about this and then somebody over here is going to be mad about that. I mean, it, it's just really gotten me almost to the point where I don't know. It's like I, I just really don't know if next season, if if the I don't know if the fire is going to burn as bright as it has in the past for me with the uh, the sport of college football. I mean, it. This is like the, the NFL. They say well, college football is going to turn to the NFL. No, it hadn't. The NFL is structured. You know, you have salary caps in the NFL. There's no salary caps here. <laughs> Nothing. So people in the comment section said it would be great if they capped the NIL off at, you know, 250000 for a player. Oh, yeah. That that would be a start. But, you know, that doesn't seem like that's the direction that, uh, that those things are headed in. So, I don't know. You guys can let me know down in the comment section below what you think about that. But the, the, the players have too much power right now. Not only are they getting a free education, now they're also getting paid on their name, image, and likeness. And they also seemingly, in a lot of cases, are going to be able to dictate how much playing time they do or do not get. I, I, I mean, it wouldn't work for me. I mean, I wouldn't, there's no way I could be, you know, even if I was qualified, which I'm obviously not, uh, I would not be able to remain in any kind of uh, authoritative position in terms of college as far as like as being a coach or you know administrator any, any, anything along those lines because I just I couldn't operate like that I couldn't operate like that the inmates would not run the asylum and I, I think that's one I think that's one of the problems with Shane Beamer is you've got some strong-willed coaches out there like a Kirby Smart or a Nick Saban and then you've got some of these other ones on the other side, like Shane Beamer, who's he appears to be more on the on the taffy do-gooder side, like Dabo, but he doesn't have the resume or really probably the coaching acumen right now that Dabo has. So I think he's busy trying to appease everybody and be nice, and he's getting run over in the process. If that makes any sense. I mean, it's really an unfortunate situation. It's it's an unfortunate situation. It's kind of like that Juice Wells situation. If if dude was was not playing and he wasn't injured any longer, then Shane Beamer gets the medical reports back on the guy. He knows what's up with him. That's why he was acting so weird all season long, or all second half of the season, whenever he was asked about him and why he tried to stop, steer away from talking about him. It's because he knew what was going on, and I think he was—he felt powerless to stop it. But to me, if he, if he's he not part of your football team, and if you're the head coach, should you not be able to tell him, no, you're you're part of this team, uh, you're going to go out there and you're going to play uh, because we need you because you are what we need uh, to win some of these ball games. I'd be more competitive in some of these ball games. No, you are going to play. I mean, can you not do that? I, I just, I don't know. That, that just, it, there, there's no rules uh, amongst uh, this stuff right now. It, it seems like, and it's really, it's really got me just kind of down in the dumps. And it's not all because Barry Jack Partner took all your all your good players is leaving you. You becoming a farm system for all the big teams. One thing Sports Talk Jay said that I disagreed with was saying that Marshawn Lloyd, you lost him, and then you lost Mario Anderson, and Mario Anderson wasn't as good as Marshawn Lloyd. I, I, mean, I kind of tend to disagree. I mean, Marshawn Lloyd was hurt most of the time he was at South Carolina, so you really never saw what he was capable of. But he also played behind an offensive line that was a little bit better, at least, than what Mario Anderson was playing behind. Mario Anderson was, was basically playing behind a JV-level offensive line that stayed hurt all the time. So we, we really don't know what he could have become. 
Um, but that's all water under the bridge now because shake on. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about some of those points down in the comment section below, and uh, I'll see you later on. Uh, oh, by the way, I, I don't know if you knew it or not, but I, I want to show you guys something real, real quick. Just, 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 just. Don't, don't get excited. It ain't nothing dirty. But if you want to take advantage of this, you might have to do it tomorrow or later tonight if you see this video in time. But Publix has got that. Whew, I almost fumbled it. They got the uh, standing rib roast on sale for $6.99 a pound. There it is. I got a smallish one. This one was $29. This is four pounds of uh, USDA Choice Beef. Our Carolina Jackpot will go in there and carve those up into some steaks and put them in individual baggies and put them in the freezer for later. So run over to Publix tomorrow if you have time or if you have one near you. <coughs> Get yourself a it's, it's boned and everything. So it's ready for you to take a sharp knife and just cut it up into steaks. Or, you know, you can uh, make a roast out of it for Christmas if you want to eat that much. But uh, that's a great deal. That's like, uh, the regular price on this is, uh, I want to say it's like $12.99 or $13.99 a pound. So this is like basically half price or maybe even a little more than half price anyway. Publix standing rib roast. Go get yourself one. I'll see you guys later on. Appreciate it. Peace. And I'm out of here. Go Gamecocks. Go, uh, you know, uh, Coach Beamer, find some NIL money and uh, go Publix. Uh -uh.